Hi everyone, for this episode I'm going to discuss how to handle a high alkalinity, low pH issue in your pool water. Typically, alkalinity and pH goes hand in hand, so you will have a high alkalinity, high pH, or a low alkalinity, low pH issue in your water. But there will be times where you might encounter a high alkalinity, low pH problem. This is the same issue I have when I first started owning my above ground pool. I added the chemical needed to balance the water, but when I did my second reading, my pH is at 7.2, but my alkalinity is 190 ppm, which is way above the uh, ideal number. If you are new to maintaining a pool, this will be a concern because you can't lower your alkalinity without affecting your pH level. Actually, it took me a while to get this figure out, so today, I'm going to share you what I learned dealing with this issue and the good news is it is very simple to handle this scenario. The only thing is it takes time to fix it. But before we get started, I wanted to thank you for watching and please like this video by clicking the thumbs up button below and also click the subscribe button if you have not done so already. And make sure to share this link to anyone you know who owns a pool so that they can also benefit from this information. Okay, so let us dive right in. I use my experience as an example. My city water have an alkalinity of 220 ppm and a pH between 7.9 and 8.2 pH. So if your city water is just like mine with high alkalinity and high pH, when you make your first pH adjustment, the alkalinity may only drop by let's say 30 ppm, which will only bring it down to about 190 ppm the question is how can you lower your alkalinity within the ideal range between 80 and 100 ppm if the ph is already low well the answer is simple increase the ph but now you are thinking that if you increase the ph will it also increase the alkalinity the answer is not necessarily you can always increase your ph by adding borax or what most people do is they use a technique called aerating. Aerating is done by creating a fountain effect or simply splashing the water. When the water caught air, it will increase the pH without affecting the alkalinity. To handle this issue, what you will need are Number one is time. You will need some time because this process may take at least a couple of days or a couple of weeks depending on how aggressive you will be in aerating your water to increase the pH level faster and also in lowering down the pH. Number two, you need ingenuity. You can simply let your kids splash around in the pool for a few hours or you can use or make something to create that fountain effect in your pool water. You can also buy something like a solar fountain from Amazon or simply put a fan facing the water so that it agitates the surface of the water 24-7. Third is muriatic acid. Muriatic acid is the only chemical you will need to bring the pH down, which will also bring down the alkalinity level. Number four is a pool calculator app. A pool calculator app will give you the exact measurement you need to add to your pool because every time your alkalinity changes, the measurement that you need to put in changes as well. Number five is a pool test kit or a test strip. This will help you test your alkalinity and pH level. So you have the time, ingenuity, muriatic acid, a pool calculator app, and the test strip. What's next? Step one, you will need to fill up the pool with water to its highest level. You need to do this because you don't want to add any water to your pool until you reach the alkalinity number that you want. Because every time you lower the pH level of your water, the alkalinity will only go down by 10 to 50 ppm, depending on how aggressive you want to be. So the average uh, reduction is about 30 ppm. Step 2. Raise the pH level up to 7.8 or higher by using the aeration method. Step 3. Using the pool calculator app, Check how much muriatic acid you will need to add to lower the pH level back down between 7 and 7.2. As your alkalinity level goes down, the amount of acid 
that you will need to bring down your pH will also go down. So you want to make sure that you test the alkalinity level and the pH level for each cycle. When you add the muriatic acid, make sure that the filter is running on its highest level. Also, if you look at this picture, you will see that the wider the range between the pH level, the more acid you will need to add. The more acid that you will add will equate to a larger alkalinity level drop. The suggested pH level is 7.2. That is so that you can continue to enjoy your pool while you are working on adjusting the alkalinity level. A pH of 7 is basic water and everything below that is considered acidic. So I will not really go below 7 when making the adjustment. Step 4. Test your pH and alkalinity after enough time have passed. I would say wait at least 16 to 24 hours before you test because the pH and alkalinity tend to change slowly after adding the chemical. If alkalinity is still above the ideal level of 80 to 120 ppm, you want to repeat step 2 to step 4. Now if you reach the ideal alkalinity range, then you are done. As you go through the process, note that the closer you are to the ideal range, the longer it will take to raise the pH level and the harder it is to raise it higher. In my experience, anything above 190 ppm alkalinity, I can easily go above 8 pH within 24 to 48 hours. But once the alkalinity reaches 180 or below, I can't go over 7.8 pH anymore at the same amount of time. For my setup, an alkalinity range between 90 and 110 ppm gives me the most stable pH. Those numbers might be different for you because every pool setup is different, but I think that is the sweet spot for most pool owner. So that's about it. I hope that you found this video helpful and that you decided to click the like and the subscribe button. Thank you for watching.